Hi everyone, today's video is going to be my build for the Diecast Mafia Station Wagon Challenge. For this I'm using this Hot Wheels 8 crate. So when I first picked up this casting, I thought this would be perfect for a clock car build. Uh, for those who have never seen Mad Max 3 Road, this is an image of what a clock car looks like. So you can see from the image, the vehicle's got a harpoon cannon to lock onto the vehicle that needs to stop, and then a plow on the back to help it stop the vehicle once it's tethered to the vehicle. As usual, here's the casting broken apart just to show you what I've got to work with. Plus, if you think you're not one of these castings and building something, you can kind of get an idea of what you've got to work with. So, first things first, I need to remove the hood. So, for this, I'm going to use my drill saw to cut the hood off. Since I already have the drill saw out, I'm also going to cut the rear section of the glass off because I did to keep the front windshield, but get rid of the rest. So I then throw the interior piece into a jar of bleach. After about a day or two, this will remove all the chrome plating. Um, be warned, you don't want to handle this by hand. You want to pull out the suppliers and then wash it in some warm salty water, which I just did all this off camera because it's easier. Next, I make some new axles for this, since I'm going to put bigger wheels on it. So I start with some styrene tubing for the main body of the axles and glue these in place. So the front wheels, I'm planning to use these wheels from the No Star Motor Figures Influencer Carriage Sprue, which I highly recommend getting if you're in the gas lines. As you can see, they have two different designs on them. I've already drilled a hole on the other side with the axle. Next, I glue in a piece of styrene rod for the axle, and I'll glue the other wheel on when I'm about finished with the build. For the rear wheels, I plan to use these Kemsel Designs 14mm fatties, tie design 3, rim design 4, rim design 7. Unfortunately, these wheels are a little damaged, but uh, I plan to do something later on and cover that up. I've also drilled this for the axle too. So moving on to the harpoon guns, now these are from the implements of kind of screw, like the wheels. So this one here is an unmodified one, but as you can see I've got another one here that I've already modified. This is so the harpoon is actually removable. So to do this I start by cutting out the harpoon from the harpoon gun using my hobby knife. Next I did attempt to drill a hole in the hand drill, but it wasn't really working that well, so I took the drill bit and put it into my power drill, which worked wonders. Although be careful not to drill into your own hand, because it can easily be done. So here I'm just testing the half moon just to make sure everything lines up. I then drill on the spearhead of the half moon that I removed. And then glue it onto a piece of styrene rod to complete the half wheel. Pull on this, I've decided to glue the interior piece and the chassis piece together just to make it easier to build later on. And then cut some pieces of styrene to shape and glue these over the wheel walls, which I then glue the half wheel guns to. Moving on to the driver, I picked out this 172 scale World War II British soldier, which I bought from eBay as a pack of five. After test fitting him, I did my old fashioned trick of cutting off his feet to get him to fit, and then glue him in place behind the wheel, although he's not fully in the seat, but it kind of works. As for his feet, I put him into a bag of 172 scale body parts, because you never know when you're going to need them later on. It's kind of a little bag of horrors because it's just unbuilt figures and bits of figures that are cut off on one bag. Next, 
Next is how to make a winch system for the half moons. I start by taking some jeweler's wire and wrapping it around the handle of my file. And then slot this over some sorry tubing. And then glue this into place between the two half moon guns, leaving the ends exposed. Following this, I take some nail nose pliers and then just bend the end of the line into shape and feed it into the half moon gun. So next I'm going to make some armoured hook caps. So for this I use some drawing pins and then just remove the pins with some sprue cutters, although a word of warning, this will chew up your sprue cutters and damage them pretty badly, so don't do it with a pair that's new. I then glue these into place. I love using these because they remind me of the old moon hook caps which are quite popular with the old 50s hot rods, which is probably a reason why I keep using them a lot. So after this I slot the axles on and glue the other wheel on. Here's a quick roll test. Sadly as you can see I never quite get the wheels perfect for the slower roll, but it's good enough. So next up we can work on the plow on the back. So I start out with some square steering rod and just make a small simple frame. Then use my hand drill to drill in some holes into the plow so I can later apply some teeth so I can later put some teeth in there. For the teeth I use some styrene tube and some styrene rod, as you can see here, which I'll cut to length later. So with all the teeth done now, I move on to the hinge mechanism. For this I'm just going to use some styrene tubing. And then cut some square styrene tubing as the other part of the hinge. Suddenly my camera's not really wanting to be in focus here, so you can't really see it all that well. But I glue this in place in the back. So just do a quick test here to make sure the glue has attached itself to the plow and stop that from moving freely. Following this I take the skid plate from the Zen Industries vehicle bits through B and I use this to cover up the front axle, though I need to cut it down because it's a little too wide. For the rear axle, I cut a larger piece of starry tubing to act as a differential over the rear axle. And I simply just cut it down the middle so it'll slot over and I can glue it in place. Next, I make a start on a retrieval arm for the plow. And for this, I glue a piece of square starry tubing and make sure it's in the right position to hold the plow up when I don't want it to be deployed. Here I start gluing on some support struts, or because I'm using super glue, I'm having to use my hobby knife to kind of move things around because if you get it on your hands, you know how much of a nightmare that is. I then start by gluing some more additional supports on the top here. Unfortunately, my phone's memory card kind of got a full video and stopped recording at this point. So, picking back up after I'd done a lot of work and realised my camera hadn't been recording. Um, so I simply just went and cut a piece of styrene tube and put it on the top to mimic a winch and then use some more of the jeweler's wire to act as the wire that would go down and retrieve the plow, although it's not actually connected. I would have liked to use string but I don't have any string and it just seemed a little overkill to build a tiny little winch system when all I really needed to do was look good when it was either locked in place or deployed. So moving on to the painting, now originally I wanted to keep the original paint job because I thought it looked really good. So first I start by taking some Ravel Matte White and just touching up where I cut the hood off. And then apply a base coat of Ravel Rust 
to the engine bay and the chassis, as well as to the plow retrieval arms and the harpoons. Following this, I dry brush on some Revol Rust onto the body. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't have the effect that I kind of wanted, and so I just had to rethink the entire paint scheme. So after some thinking, I apply a base coat of rust to the entire body. So then start to give this vehicle a two-tone paint job like it would have had from the factory by using some Revol White and just stippling it on. Uh, this is done so the humorous colour underneath will bleed through, kind of like how rust would bleed through the paint. I then did the same thing with some Revolve Fern Green. I also applied this green to the engine. And then dry brush on some Revolve Metallic Steel onto the harpoon guns. And then I dry brush on some Revolve Metallic Steel onto all the metal parts, such as the plow retrieval down, um, spears, bumpers and such. For the interior, I just had to match it with a body colour just use fur and green again and then use some Revol beige to paint the headlights as well as the compressors on the harpoon guns. Next I use some Revol stone grey to paint some of the tubes and the harpoon guns. For the tail lights I use some Revol fiery red. Then for the driver I paint his uniform and Revol semi yellow. And then obviously use Revol Flesh, Freeze Flesh. After this I'm going to use some Revol Matte Black to paint the tyres. Then finally I finish the whole thing off with a homemade black wash. And here we are for the finished build. I have to admit, I think this is the best Kesslands car I've built as of yet. As I've always wanted to build one of these, but with all the moving parts, um, it just seemed a bit of a too difficult a task. The reason for the moving parts is like with anything I build, I always have the foresight that at some point I'm going to use this in an animation. So I always try and have all the parts moving so it's going to be easy to animate and doing things. Otherwise if I just glued this all together and the wheels it would just be impossible to animate. Even with the paint job not working out the way I want to, I think the final result actually turned out a lot better. Uh, I'm just really happy with the way this thing turned out. Be sure to check out some of the other builds by the other builders who took part in the challenge. Uh, to do that you just search Diecast Mafia Station Weapon Challenge and you should get a lot of results. And like usual, stick around for the glamour shots at the end and the short animation. As well as I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.